Hi, my name is Alex. Uh, today I'm going to be going over some support for missions to Venus. Uh, so using SDK uh, as well as ANSYS products, uh, how can we create a fully fledged mission to Venus? How can we take a look at our design reference mission? Uh, how can we support a Venus mission throughout the life cycle? Uh, today I'm going to start by looking at SDK and some of the mission planning that you might be familiar with, things like Astrogator, and then I'm going to be moving into uh, some other things, uh, mostly like Astrogator, uh, but using Venus density models uh, as well as ANSYS antenna patterns. So I'm going to start, take a look at my screen here. I'm going to start with some mission planning generally. On the left here we can see my mission starts around Earth. We're going to launch out of Japan into a highly inclined orbit. You can see I'm taking off. Uh, this green here is just the equatorial plane. From there I am flying from Earth to Venus and that's the window on the right. And here we can see the inertial plane as well. My mission goes all the way from Earth to Venus and what I'm doing here is just targeting a C3 energy, so an escape energy and then I'm targeting a launch epoch uh, but I'm giving pretty wide tolerances there because I don't really know when my launch epoch is going to be you know, based on weather conditions for instance. So I want to see what is the minimum delta V at a launch epoch or alternatively what is the lowest delta V I can get for my launch and I don't have a constraint on my EPIC, and that's particularly useful earlier in your mission life cycle. In the center screen here, we can see the equatorial plane, so really just the ecliptic plane for Venus, as we've defined it. That blue coming in is going to be my satellite flying in. It's going to swing through the Venus atmosphere. It's going to slow down. We're actually using the Venus atmosphere for aero braking, since it's so dense. And then we're going to end up in this elliptical orbit there and that's the pink. So again we're targeting, we're using B-plane targeting as we arrive, something again that a lot of our astrogators users will be familiar with, however what they might not be familiar with is using the Venusgram density model. So that's a 2005 program from NASA. Uh, the STK version is in beta but it has density and temperature so it can be used for targeting you know maybe a velocity once it exits the atmosphere uh, and getting into that elliptical orbit, so targeting that final elliptical orbit, or maybe using, you know, maybe doing a flyby but getting so close that you're using some aero braking techniques. From here I'm moving further into our mission. So once we arrive at Venus, what do we actually want to do? Uh, so this was loosely modeled over one of the recently announced Venus missions from NASA. Uh, so the NASA Goddard version is going to be Da Vinci and JPL is working on a mission named Veritas. Uh, in this case, I've just modeled a probe and an orbiter. Uh, the orbiter is going to start in a circular orbit, which completely nominal, once again, that was completely my choice. Uh, but it starts in a circular orbit and that probe is going to detach and then it's actually going to naturally decay, its orbit will naturally decay due to the atmosphere, and it will enter right around a point of interest, something like Alpha Regio. We can take a look here on the left. We can actually see the deep space network. So two of those sites are in contact with my orbiter. And on the left, I can actually see my link budgets. So the top left, I've got data displays, and that's live link budget for my connection between the deep space network and my probe or my orbiter, excuse me. So the orbiter is relaying information back, probably from the probe, as the probe reads the atmosphere, or maybe takes images, things of that nature. The probe will connect to the orbiter, and then I'm looking here at the link quality between the orbiter and the deep space network. On the right, you can see in the top left, I actually have density and temperature. So that's from the Venusgram model I was describing earlier. Uh, you can see at this moment in time, it looks like I'm at you know 110 kilometers altitude. My density is really dense because it's Venus, and then my temperature is not all that hot, and it'll probably get hotter as I as I decrease in altitude, uh, which you might expect. On the right there, you can actually see there's a link budget between my probe and my orbiter. So here I'm gauging. How is my probe communicating with my orbiter? And then I can gauge you know, my link between my orbiter and the deep space network. I'm actually using ANSYS antenna patterns. So from HFSS, I'm using some antenna patterns for both my probe and my orbiter. So I'm going to zoom in on those antenna patterns because they look pretty great. Here you can see I'm using a fixed patch antenna for my probe. And we can actually, as we if I play this backwards, we can see my link is actually going to increase in quality. 
because I'm actually my probe is actually getting closer to my orbiter. Uh, this is particularly useful because it will help us decide where I'm going to detach my probe, where I'm going to have my orbiter located when my probe's actually getting close to the ground because that's when I really need that information. So if I do in fact have a fixed patch antenna, which in this case you would likely need because the atmosphere is very thick, it's very hot, you want to build something that's very resilient, you need uh, an antenna that's certainly not going to be gimbaled or anything of that nature. Uh, maybe phased array if you think you're really fancy. Um, but here we can see that, you know, my link continues to get better. So this is particularly useful. So again, I'm using a high quality antenna pattern from Antis HFSS just to make sure that my mission is giving me the results that I'd like. I could go ahead and do Monte Carlo with this. I could, you know, depending on when my epic is for this orbit or when, even when my epic for my launch is, it could determine how effective my lander is at getting to the location that I need it to. So in this case, Alpha Regio. Other trajectories might give me worse communications. What if I have a blackout on this date or I really need information when the probe goes down, but instead my orbiter is actually behind Venus and can't communicate with Earth. These are all things I really need to know. And because of the dense atmosphere of Venus, I'm probably not going to be able to get my probe to communicate directly with Earth, like something like a Mars rover might do, uh, which a few of them actually have recently. So this is particularly important as I'm designing my mission and iterating to decide what's going to be best. So that's really early mission, uh, but the great news is that you can take this, this model, take this model with Astrogator and some of the density models, the HFSS antennas, and all of your work's going to come together and it's going to last through your entire life cycle. Uh, you can use it all the way up until your mission as a reference. One last thing I want to mention is that we can actually take imagery and terrain for Venus as long as the imagery and terrain is in the right format. So here you can see that I actually have some Venus imagery and not a ton of terrain, uh, but if your terrain is in the correct format, uh, so it's going to be polar stereographic, much like our lunar terrain or Mars terrain, uh, so an LBL file and an image file, you can actually go ahead and use that in your scenario as well if you want to do some studies on line of sight using the terrain. I mean, this is particularly flat uh, in, in a lot of cases, so maybe not as relevant, but something that could be useful, particularly if you're going to have a probe landing on the surface. It should also be noted that for these satellites, you can also do things like study the attitude. So using SDK Solus, uh, you can also use Scheduler to schedule the best times. Using the Deep Space Network is particularly expensive. So in this case, it could be really useful to go ahead and use SDK Scheduler to determine when you're going to be communicating with your orbiter and when would be the most effective, um, whether your probes, you know, if your probe's descending, you want to have connection all the, the whole time. Uh, if your probe's not descending, if it's attached or that part of your mission is over, maybe less important. Uh, so again, SDK Scheduler, a great addition, as well as SDK Solus. The last thing is that with communications on Venus, uh, you can actually go ahead and add custom losses or custom wave propagation, so custom RF propagation within SDK. Uh, so if your communications team has a model that they're using for Venus in particular, uh, you can go ahead and take that into account using SDK. Um, it's really, really quite easy, really just plug and play. Um, and you can add constant gains or losses, um, which you know, can mimic that to a level of fidelity, uh, so that dialable fidelity. Um, maybe you don't need to know exactly what that model is, but you do know that you're going to get a loss when your probe enters the atmosphere. You can go ahead and add that as well. And here we can see another HFSS antenna pattern. It's going to be a parabolic antenna. Uh, that's pointing back to Earth. It's very high gain, it's very powerful, uh, and it's got a great focus right in the center there. Uh, we can see that, and that's gimbaled something like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, used a similar method, and that's going to allow us to get all of our data back. Uh, it's going to go ahead and transmit in the X-band. Um, it's going to give us the data that we need and the information that our probe is giving to our orbiter. And that's making missions that go to Venus. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out, uh, support at agi.com, and have a good one.